Welcome to Queensland, where life is at its most abundant, a place of ancient wisdom and inspiration. Home to five World Heritage listed wonders, extraordinary landscapes and the world's oldest living cultures. It's great to have you with us where the horizon is bright. With over 1,000 cities and towns, there's plenty of room to explore, learn and grow. From the Great Barrier Reef and Gondwana Rainforest to the scenic rim and Carnarvon Gorge. Find moments rich in spiritual connection and nature-filled exhilaration. Embrace the unrivaled energy of our regions and experience our world-class events. Immerse yourself in our vibrant city centres, full of arts, culture and thriving communities. Meet friendly faces, extraordinary wildlife and dive into life-changing new adventures. Indulge in time to create memories and connect to yourself and your surroundings, reaching new heights on what really matters. Lean into our sunshine mecca and take the time to feel the breeze on your skin. You'll feel renewed, inspired, restored, changed, filled with epic wonder and opportunity. Thank you for joining us right here in Queensland. We promise you'll leave a little different. Hello and welcome. Welcome to this information session, Paving the Way to Brisbane, uh, IFLA Information Future Summit in Preview. Thank you for joining us. This is going to be an opportunity to hear from a number of speakers on a range of topics uh, related to the summit. Uh, there will be also an opportunity to ask questions in the chat and we will look forward to interacting with you uh, throughout this session. Without further ado, I would like to invite our first speaker, uh, Vicky McDonald, IFLA president, who is going to host this event in Brisbane, Australia. Welcome, Vicky. Thank you very much, Christine, and Gumba Malgan, Gumba Nani Girandu, which is good uh, Good evening. It's good to see you. And that's in Baragam, which is a traditional language of the community that I grew up on the Darling Downs here in Queensland, Australia. It's fantastic to see so many of you online with us this evening as we share a quick information session about what you can expect at this year's Information Futures Summit, which we held here in Brisbane. My colleagues will tell you more about the session as we progress through the slides. So if we go to the next slide, which is an image of the website where you'll find a lot of information about the summit. This is an image of Queensland and Brisbane, the capital city of Queensland. And you can see the river. Uh, the river, the Maywa, weaves its way through Brisbane. And that is what is represented in the logo for the summit. The IFLA Information Futures Summit is a new type of event for IFLA and it's like nothing that we've presented before. So I'm really excited that I'm able to host this new event here in Brisbane. It, um, it is very much a curated program and uh, you'll be able to explore a lot of uh, information about the trends around information and knowledge at this summit. You can also see in this particular image just how compact the central business district of Brisbane is. On the left-hand side of the top slide, we have where the summit will be held. The State Library of Queensland is nearby. And then you just go across the walking bridge to the central business district. And my colleague, Marion, will tell you more about that and how you can do tours um, as we progress through this information session. But let's take a little bit of a look at what you can expect. So on our next slide is a beautiful image of the CBD, and um, we've whisked on to the next slide, which is actually an important um, aspect of what will be launched at the IFLA Information Futures Summit. We'll be releasing the new IFLA strategy for 2024 to 2029. Perhaps over the last six months, you've contributed to the shaping of that strategy. And um, I know that in my library, we use this strategy when we're doing our planning for the future. So at the summit, there'll be the opportunity to unpack the strategy, to think about how it can influence the work that you do in your library and how you plan for the future as well. There'll be from sessions around theory into practice where we can actually spend the time exploring the strategy and thinking about how it relates to our work. 
On our next slide, you see another important aspect of what will be released at the summit, the new IFLA trend report for 2024. This is the first time we've done a major rethink of the trend report in over 10 years, and it will explore global trends around information and knowledge. We're particularly excited that the authors of the research will be with us in Brisbane, Professor Michael Deswani and Associate Professor Kib Osman. So Michael and Kim, in their session, will share with us the key findings that they have found in doing their research around trends in 2024. There'll also be sessions where you can unpack those trends and talk about how those trends impact on your library, your community, and your country. So really a great opportunity to think about those particular trends and what they mean for you. And uh, in the lead up to the summit, there'll be opportunities to explore some of those trends, but also to think about different scenarios. So a great opportunity to come together with your colleagues and unpack this particular trend report. On the next slide, we've got some information around the Ignite Talks. So the Ignite Talks are an opportunity for colleagues to share the work that they've been doing in their libraries around the world. So the, um, the call for uh, nominations for the Ignite Talks has closed and our panel is currently reviewing all of the submissions that we received. We received an extraordinary number of submissions, so I'm really excited about the program that we'll be able to deliver in, um, in Brisbane based on those particular talks. And again, that information will be shared with you in the coming month once the panel has reviewed all the nominations that we've received. We will have a fantastic program and um, in this session, my colleague Jan uh, Richards will tell, share with you some of the information around our key keynote speakers and we'll also have some tours. My colleague Marion will share information about that. So I really do look forward to welcoming you to Brisbane, Australia in September, October this year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Vicky. <clears throat> I was about to introduce the next speaker, speaker. Uh, who is uh, Jan Richards, and she will tell us a little bit more about uh, speakers uh, that uh, we will have a chance to meet uh, in Brisbane in person. Welcome, Thank Jan. You. Thank you, Christine, and hello, everybody. It's a delight to be with you all. As Vicky has said, we have got an amazing program planned. And that program is anchored by our exciting and stimulating keynote speakers who have accepted our invitation to participate. I would ask you all, or I would invite you all, to explore the speakers page on the website where you'll be able to discover more about all of them and go down some of the rabbit holes from our links and find out about some of the projects that they're involved on. But just to give you a taste of what to expect, I'd like to just highlight a few of the speakers. And I apologize in advance for any mispronunciation of names, please forgive me. Um, but we could divide them up into a few different areas. First of all, we've got speakers from the library field. So we're absolutely delighted that Dr. Carla Hayden um, from the USA is going to um, be able to join us um, at, as part of the, um, the program. Um, though she will, be, she will be there online, I have to, to say that. But Carla was sworn in as the 14th uh, US Librarian of Congress in 2016. And as such, she was the first woman and the first African-American to lead the National Library. And prior to that, she um, held many positions in uh, public libraries and on boards and with the American Library Association, most notably before she became the, um, the Librarian of Congress, she was at the Enoch Pratt Free Library in Baltimore in Maryland. And of course, we're thinking about our friends in um, Baltimore at the moment following the tragedy with the, the bridge there last night. We're also delighted to have Masud Kokur from the University of Leeds in the UK, who describes himself as an accidental librarian. 
Um, he's passionate about digital leadership and innovation in the changing library and archive environment. And anyone who's ever heard him speak just says what a, what a great speaker he is and how engaging and what fabulous ideas he brings. So he's the, also the current chair of Research Libraries UK, which is a consortia of the 39 leading and most significant research libraries in the UK and Ireland. Certainly someone not to be missed. Then from Singapore, we've got Jean Tan and Sher Pong, uh, who are known for their innovative uh, approach. Uh, Jean is the Chief Librarian of the National Library Board and watches over the professional development of all librarians in the National Library. And um, as the Chief Innovation Officer, he's spearheading the development of new initiatives there. And Sher Pong is the Chief Executive Officer of the National Library. And he also oversees many of the exciting developments that happen with our colleagues in Singapore. And um, I know that we know that they will bring um, a different perspective and a lot of fun to our program. Our speakers also reflect the great relationship that IFLA has with the United Nations and the work that we do on the um, strategic development goals. And so we are thrilled that we have Damien Cardona, who is originally from Spain, but who is currently based in Australia. He has more than 26 years of experience in strategic communications, crisis communications, outreach and campaigns with the UN system. We also have um, Anna Filippo, and this is where my, my pronunciation is going to go crazy, I apologise, Vodolak, um, and she is a Professor of Law and UNESCO Chair on International Law and Cultural Heritage at the University of Technology in Sydney. And she will bring um, a great insight into how we can work with the UN and uh, develop our relationships there. But we also know that it's incredibly important not just to look within our own networks. And so a number of our really um, highly regarded speakers, and there are so many, um, are Marie uh, Kowalenski, from um, who is a professor and chair in digital economy in at the Queensland University of Technology Business School. Now, Marek is listed amongst the top 100 global thought leaders in AI by Thinkers360. That's a pretty big claim. And um, digital is certainly a big feature of this conference and our speakers program. We also have Rebecca Giblin from the University of Melbourne and many of you might have heard Rebecca speak at an IFLA conference or seminar in the past. She has done a lot of work around um, e-lending um, e and e-resources and the, um, the untapped Australian liter literary heritage and also the rights of creators and um, she will be someone to certainly listen to. And finally, I'd just like to um, highlight Daniel Hook, who is with us from the UK. He is the CEO of Digital Science, co-founder of Symplectic, a research information management provider and co-founder of Research on Research. So he um, will give us more insights into the future of libraries and where we will be going. We have a, um, a saying in Australia, you wouldn't miss it for quids. And I think that that's certainly what you would say about this, this program. But can I say, next slide, please, um, Christine. Thank you. We're constantly adding additional speakers. Uh, to the program. So bookmark the speakers page and keep a look out for what's happening. And we will be also sending alerts every time we add someone new. Um, it is a, an ever-changing feast and I know that you'll really enjoy it. So make sure you come and see you in Brisbane. Thank you so much, Jen. This uh, really is a, a very exciting and uh, unique experience 
to meet uh, those uh, high level speakers uh, in person. But there is uh, more to the event. Uh, and uh, as a next speaker, I would like to invite uh, now Marian uh, Morgan Binden, uh, who will talk a little bit uh, about the library tours. Welcome, Marian. Thank you, Christine. Jingari, hello, everyone. In the language of the Kumba Mary family of the Kumba language region where I come from, now, what library and information summit could be complete without the opportunity to see libraries and cultural spaces? And I'm here to tell you about a unique opportunity that combines professional development with a touch of adventure and how you can take your IFLA Information Futures Summit experience to the next level. We have curated a range of tours to suit different interests and schedules. You will see libraries and cultural spaces with cutting edge technology, with breathtaking architecture, with unique collections and innovative programs. Our self-guided explorer tours have been designed to showcase the rich diversity and innovation of the region's award-winning or unique libraries. Our library colleagues have thrown open their doors in an open house, giving the summit participants the opportunity to explore some great new and refurbished spaces. And as Vicky showed in the first slide, the city is very much connected with footbridges, bus lanes and city cats that traverse the river. And yes, the little um, river cats are called kitty cats, something to experience. Just a couple of examples of what you will see is in the very inner city is the State Library of Queensland that showcases a really comprehensive collection of Queensland's cultural and documentary heritage. But so, uh, SQL, as I fondly call it, the State Library is also home to the Edge, which is an amazing interactive maker space, in addition to the John Oxley Library, the Australian Library of Art, various galleries and, um, and exhibitions not to be missed. GOMA, the Queensland Art Gallery and Gallery of Modern Art is an award-winning architecture coupled with Riverside Galleries with ever-changing contemporary and historical art. These two are in the same precinct. It is a very, very walkable neighbourhood. And just a few minutes walk down the road, possibly 10, is the Queensland University of Technology Gardens Point campus. There's a, the opportunity to see their library, their digital space called the Cube, the Cube, I'm sorry, and Old Government House, which sits adjacent in the gardens. There's a range of special libraries in the mix too. The Conservatorium of Music of Queensland is one of Australia's leading music and performing arts school and settled in that precinct is the College of Art and Design with very special interest areas in contemporary Australian Indigenous art, design and visual arts. These are thriving communities of artists and designers that is a really unique opportunity for participants to take part in a guided tour. Equally, there's the Queen Elizabeth II Courts of Law. This is where my library is, and included is a tour of not only the library, but the building's public art. Another unique offering in the mix is the Anzac Square Memorial Gardens, a digital installation in Anzac Square that commemorates the Anzac story. We've also curated a range of tours just outside the CBD that requires taking public transport. And don't worry, we'll put all the instructions on how you do that. And a little further afield by train, you have the opportunity to visit Ipswich Council Public Libraries, which hosts the Children's Library, the Australia's only public library that's dedicated to children from the ages zero to 12. The children can come and explore, learn and play. 
And it even features a specially designed catalogue just for kids, in addition to several unique multi-reality interactive experiences. We will be going at a time when the adults are actually allowed in. The other opportunity is to go further afield, again by train and visiting some of the brilliant libraries at the Gold Coast, starting with Griffith University, which is located in the cutting edge Gold Coast Health and Knowledge Precinct alongside the Gold Coast Hospital. You'll continue your journey to Helensvale Library and Cultural Centre, which is one of the Gold Coast's largest and most versatile purpose-built community hubs. Again, you can take your by train, you can travel a little bit further and see three or four other public libraries before at the end of the day, you'll be able to take a dip in the surf or pop in to a shopping expedition opposite Pack Fair. You will have earned it. Now, it's really unlikely that you'll be able to visit all of these libraries in one day. So we're providing a description of each of these so that you can make an informed decision. Believe me, it's going to be hard. The library tours will be available or most of them will be available on the Thursday and Friday so that those that do have associated events will still have the opportunity to be, to be a library explorer. So as Jan says, please get your bookmarks out and bookmark the library tours page. Thank you so much, Marianne. Uh, so much uh, to look forward to. And uh, I really look uh, forward to having those descriptions on the website and uh, reading about those all those amazing libraries, so different. And, uh, and uh, this is a great opportunity, I think. Thank you so much for giving some insight into what's uh, coming up. And uh, we really look forward to uh, exploring. <laughs> Libraries. And we look very much forward to welcoming you, Christine. Yeah. Bye-bye for now. Yeah, bye. Thank you. So many things uh, will be happening uh, at the summit, um, uh, starting from IFLA's own new strategy, a uh, very exciting uh, trend report, including the possibility to meet uh, the authors of the, of the report, uh, so many high-level speakers, um so many other things uh and now i'd like to show you just uh, a short recap uh, video of some of the reasons uh which um, are good reasons to actually go to brisbane and participate in this event Okay, uh, so we've been talking uh, for a little while, uh, but we would like to also use an opportunity and hear uh, from you. That's why uh, I prepared uh, two um, polls and uh, we'll invite you now uh, to participate and share your thoughts uh, in a question. Uh, what are you most uh, interested in uh, from what you have heard? Uh, is it IFLA trend report, uh, IFLA strategy? Uh, are, those, are they speakers? Uh, maybe they are Ignite Talks, uh, library tours, uh, or exploring more about Brisbane and uh, Queensland and Australia.
So we've got some answers coming in. I'll just keep the question open for a little bit more. So. Okay, so we've got answers from the majority of uh, uh, of us. So I'll end this now, and uh, uh, here it is. So it seems that the most of us are interested uh, in the new IFLA trend report, and I must say I'm very excited too. So this is going to be a major event in EPLUS history and uh, a major event for uh, for the library field that will provide insights uh, into the future. So I'll stop sharing now this and um, and we'll try to launch the second poll that I the second question that I prepared for you. Okay, let's hear from you now. What are you most excited about uh, the summit? Is it being at this key in-person IFLA meeting of the year? Is it visit Australia and discover its libraries that we heard a little bit about uh, just right now? to learn from keynote speakers, have a possibility to meet them and talk to them, to network with those thought leaders from across the world, to refresh and re-energize uh, our outlooks, or to bring back lessons and innovations to our own countries, to our own libraries. And I'll give you a little bit more time. That's about half of us have answered so far. Okay, so I'm closing it now. Thank you so much for your answers. And here is what we think. Seems that the most of us are excited to bring back lessons and innovations to our own work and to learn from those inspiring keynote speakers. Thank you so much for your interaction. I certainly also look forward to be at this key in-person meeting uh, uh, of IFLA uh, of 2014. So I'll stop sharing now. And let's move on. We have uh, one last speaker, uh, which I would like to now invite uh, our uh, Deputy Secretary General Helen Mandel will talk uh, a little bit more about why we should all consider attending and going to Brisbane. Welcome, Helen. Thank you, Christina, and um, it's great to be here and see the number of people who have uh, joined to listen uh, to this. Um, I'm going to start with the next slide, and um, this is an interesting one for many of you. This is the coastal banksia. It's an Australian native tree, and it grows in Queensland. And you'll see two seed pods. One is very closed, it's very tight, but the other one is open. Ears are open, mouth is open, eyes are open. And I just saw this and I thought, that's what I think um, the uh, summit is about. It's something where the seeds will fly out from what you hear and learn and propagate in the environment and where there's a new environment to grow. So I've called my small talk about growing and growth. So many things are changing in our environment and in the world around us. Libraries have always been leaders in addressing um, 
these changes, both technologically and those societal changes that happen. And now is no different. We need to grow and adapt. Our profession and our libraries need to grow and adapt. So what are the benefits of attending the summit? Why choose this meeting and not one of the other many others that are occurring this year? This summit asks you to be open, like those seed pods. It provides a space, and that's something that we don't often create in our lives. We're often very busy looking at our particular area of the profession, but not thinking and taking the time to think more broadly. So this is a space to hear from outstanding speakers and thinkers, and as Jan um, mentioned, not only librarians, but those exploring the impacts and issues uh, within society. So we're going outside our own bubble to the issues that will affect our everyday work. This isn't just librarians talking to librarians, but people from outside informing us of things that we may need to be um, uh, thinking about. So we know that many meetings at the moment are concentrating on AI. It's the topic of the moment. And that does feature, but it's the, not the only thing that will make changes in our lives. The summit addresses other areas from digital media technology and digital literacy to the economics of information, how is that changing? To the whole open movement, not just within libraries, but um, within academia and other areas. Cultural heritage in all its forms, digital, um, uh, analog, the impact of crises and, and wars is all something that we need to be thinking about not just for our own library, but for the pres pres preservation of the profession. And of course, our leadership and our workforce, how are we actually preparing them for what's coming? How are we going to deal with that ourselves as a profession? So there will be this space to discuss, to think and reflect, not only on what this means for you personally and your career, but for your workplace. The innovative session formats will give space to connect to others from many different sectors and countries and help you to build your own understanding of how these changes may affect you. As we've mentioned, IFLA will be launching the trend report. And uh, this isn't just a report to read, but it's a document to stimulate discussions in the workplace, um, in your association, library association, or your region. And having a global community for IFLA means that each of us will address things differently, that we can learn from each other, we can have difficult conversations with each other, but it's about being open and understanding. And we know that that first trend report became a signpost for discussions right across the profession, across the world, and particularly with students of library and information science, because they will be the ones that come after us. So we hope that in the summit, you'll inspire each other and you'll take the knowledge gained to build your future readiness when you go back to work. And in the workplace, we hope that you'll be a thought leader um, a source of inspiration when you return to your workplace so that you can lead discussions with your colleagues, provide the questions that will stimulate um, thoughts because you, we know, are putting together your strategies for the future. So we hope that the summit will really be um, a platform that you can jump off from. And of course, last, is the benefit of attending and the experience of Australia. As an Australian, um, of course, it's a wonderful country, 
but you'll also have heard of fantastic libraries providing outstanding services to communities. So all of this fauna and uh, flora is waiting to welcome you as well. So if Australia has been on your bucket list, coming to the summit is really um, a great time to do it now. A bit of um, industrial tourism work and pleasure as well. So we really hope to see you in Brisbane. Thank you so much, Helen. Uh, what you just shared with us, I think it aligns uh, so well with what uh, people are looking forward, as we just learned. So we look forward to, to bring those lessons, to learn, to inspire, and to bring those lessons and those innovations back to our workplaces. So thank you so much for this insight. and. Um, also, the flora and fauna, I must say, is super exciting. <laughs> Thank you, and look forward to, to learning more. And now, our final speaker. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Maria Manuel to the stage uh, to share with us uh, some also very special information about the venue. Yes, we, uh, hi everyone. I thought that we would finish, um, we would not leave without talking about the venue and its location in the city. Um, as we uh, started the preparation in January in Brisbane, um, I, I got the chance to travel to Brisbane and I thought that having organized um, different conferences and events in different cities and different convention centers of the world, uh, in the world, um, Brisbane was uh, really uh, very, uh, is very, very attractive. Uh, Christine, if you can move to the next slide. So here on the map, so it's a screenshot of Google map, you can see that uh, BCEC is the acronym for Brisbane uh, Convention and Exhibition Center. It's located uh, next to the river. And if you can click on uh, Christine to have the image appearing. So you can see that uh, the little arrow, the white little arrow, uh, this is where the convention center is and is right next to the is right next to the river and is facing uh, on the opposite side of the river you have the business district like vicky mentioned it's really very close by to the um queens uh, queensland queensland library sorry state queensland library uh, it's really 10 minutes walk it's really very well located you can see that uh, next to the river you have like all these uh, parklands, this amazing um, South Bank district, which is really, um, really nice to walk around. Um, if you can move to the next slide, Christine, please. So this is um, a picture of the, um, or a drawing of the, uh, of the, the venue itself. So I thought I would put it in here uh, because Although I'm not sure you can see it very well, but we would be located on the on the third floor where you can see that all the, these stripes, and um, and it's gonna be it's full of light, it's full of windows everywhere, it's full of nice space to connect and mingle and meet your peers uh, during the uh, during the breaks. It's really a really uh, state of the art venue, extremely well located again. Uh, and if you can move to the next slide, please. Um, so here again, I just wanted to showcase that in red you have BCEC, which is the picture I've put on uh, the back uh, at the bottom, and and there you can see that uh, we're a little bit better uh, that the, the 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 venue is located uh, again in front of the river. So it's really, everything is very easy to walk around. It's full of restaurants. You have like more than 70 restaurants around the convention center. Uh, there is this uh, very beautiful pool that you can see in the top right corner, which is a public uh, space where you can uh, go and walk and have a swim. Um, on the left you can uh, of it, you can see an image of the Brisbane uh, sign, which is very iconic. And, and you can see that right behind it actually is the river. You don't see the river, but that's the view that you will have from the business district. On the left, uh, you have a little picture of the, the of, of Vicky's library. Uh, it's an amazing building. 
Um, and again, it's 10 minutes walk from uh, 10, only 10 minutes walk from the Brisbane uh, Convention Center. So everything is very easy. Is very everything is very compact. Uh, like um, Marianne mentioned before, across the river you have also many other libraries. On that side of the river, where you have like the two little yellow stars, you can see the. Um, I I just wanted to point the the art galleries, two art galleries uh, that are amazing. Um, and you also have a lot of museums and uh, around. So it's really like a, a great place. It's, it's very easy. And uh, again, you will have a great time uh, when visiting Brisbane. Thank you, Christine. That sounds uh, really, really exciting and uh, so colorful. Uh, the idea of having a swim between the breaks of the sessions <laughs> also sounds exciting and uh, all the libraries everything seems so close and walk, walking distance so uh, thank you for sharing this information with us uh, with that uh, said uh, we are close to the end of this information session i would like to thank uh, all uh, speakers and uh uh, join uh, me back on the stage. Before we uh, say goodbyes for today, I would like to just uh, mention that uh, we gave you some information today. And as you've heard several times, the information is uh, being added to the website on an ongoing basis. And uh, you'll see uh, information about the library tours. So there you can check the speakers. But I also want to highlight uh, a special section in the about section uh, uh, where frequently asked questions uh, section. This is the place where you can also find answers to some of the questions that you might have. There is a lot of information there and uh, I invite you really to go on the website and explore uh, more as uh, we prepare uh, for Brisbane in September. Okay, so uh, I here we would like to just thank everybody for uh, joining us uh, today and also interacting with us, sharing your thoughts, asking your questions, and big thank you to all the speakers, and uh, we'll see you all in Brisbane. <laughs>